Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2022 Toyota Sienna. Now this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like when it's installed and you see it does live underneath the rear fascia but it does have an exposed cross tube but I tell you what when it comes to a minivan if you have kids in the back or anything like that having a hitch is a great option to add a lot of real estate to your vehicle whether it be for your bike racks cargo carriers or even towing a small trailer so really the look of the cross tube under here with the black powder coat finish doesn't look too bad and i think it's totally worth it for the actual usability of the hitch it's going to be a two inch by two inch opening which is going to be a great size to really tackle on a bunch of different accessories a lot of them do come in that two inch uh, dimension so this is really going to open up the options to what you have available you're also going to see our nice reinforced collar here and that's just going to give a little bit more rigidity we also have a plate style safety chain loop and that's going to be great if you do plan on pulling a trailer that way you can load up your larger clevis style hooks or even your standard one should fit just fine you're also going to notice it has a 5 8 hole for the hitch pin and clip and while this doesn't come with a hitch pin and clip, a lot of your accessories when you pick them up will come with one. Um, and if they don't, you, we can always pick up one here at eTrailer. There's plenty of different options available, including locking ones. And that's really nice. That way when you load your accessories up, you can actually lock that, take the keys with you, and your accessories aren't gonna disappear in the hands of someone else. Now being class three, it does have a decent amount of weight ratings. So in fact, it, you'll have a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds, which is the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. It's not too bad. And you'll have a ton weight rating of 350 pounds. And that's gonna be the weight pushed down on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So some of your extended or uh, suspended accessories when you load them up, that's gonna be the weight kind of that it's supporting. Now this can be used with weight distribution. And if you're unfamiliar with that, that's just a system that you can put on here to put take off that tongue weight on the trailer and it's going to bump your weight capacity up so it's actually going to go to 5,000 pounds for your gross trailer weight rating and your tongue weight is going to go up just a little bit as well at 500. now it's important you're going to want to check your owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of and compare that with the numbers on the hitch take the lower of those two numbers so you stay safe I'm gonna do a few quick measurements here. So from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point on our rear fascia, we're looking at about three and a half inches here. And that's important to note for your folding accessories. That way it's not gonna make contact with your rear fascia or the hatch. Now, that, you shouldn't have too much of an issue here, but something I will note is with your folding accessories, just make sure that your hatch will not be in the way. So just something to think about when picking accessories. Something else that we'll check is gonna be our ground clearance. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're right at one foot, which is gonna be decent for the hitch. I don't worry about this making contact with anything, but when you have your accessories loaded up, they will extend on the vehicle. And when you go up a hill, sometimes those can kind of get close to the ground. So when you are driving on inclines or maybe off a little rugged path, just keep that in mind when you have your accessories loaded up. Now, if a hitch is something that you are interested in, that way you can add whatever accessories you need to your van, then you can follow me along with the install portion. A lot of times that will scare people off as sometimes you may not ha have all the tools that you need, but I'm here to tell you, this is actually a very easy installation. You can do it in your garage or driveway. You should be able to have it knocked out in about 20 minutes. So let's take a look at those steps and get your hitch installed. Now we are using a lift and that's mostly to show you guys at home what we're doing to get a better view, but this is definitely an installation you can do in your garage or on your driveway. So don't let this scare you off and uh, let's go step by step and get our hitch installed first we're going to see we have some plastic push pins here and to get these off you actually have four different slots that you can slide the flathead in you just kind of put that in there a little twist should pop that and you can pull these out now during this whole process you're going to want to make sure you hold on to all your hardware just to make sure you have all the necessary ones for reinstallation now there's also going to be two 10 millimeter bolts we're going to be taking the one that's further towards the rear right here off as well as the one that's under here by this little mud flap so go ahead get those removed now our panel should come out pretty easily 
So we'll go ahead and we're gonna set this aside for now, as well as our hardware. So now looking underneath, you're gonna see that there are three weld holes. Now it's possible that your van has rubber plugs on these, which is actually really nice because that's gonna keep those holes nice and protected over time. So rust and corrosion really don't have a chance to build up in here. Now if yours are missing, that's totally okay. But you just wanna make sure that the threads are clean. So I suggest grabbing one of the bolts supplied in the hardware and you can run it through here. If it's giving you any um, resistance, a tube brush and some penetrating oil is a good way to kind of clean those out. But if you have the rubber plug, chances are yours should be in pretty good condition. And now's a good time to grab an extra set of hands to put the hitch up in place. If you're doing this on the ground, uh, you can kind of balance it on a floor jack and raise it up in place. It's kind of up to you, but having an extra set of hands is really nice. So you're gonna wanna grab the bolt and a conical tooth washer that comes with the hitch. Now your conical tooth washer has a concave shape with the teeth on one side. That needs to bite into the actual metal on the hitch. So just make sure you have that washer in the proper orientation. And then we'll just go ahead, we're gonna align this with those weld nut holes up there. And then once you have those aligned, just take one of the bolts and just kind of hand thread it in there enough to support the hitch. You're gonna put one on each side and that way the hitch is gonna stay suspended while we put the rest of the hardware in. I'm just gonna go ahead with the rest of the hardware and get these hand tightened in. Um, you really don't have to get too crazy as far as tightening them down. And sometimes it'll actually help to kind of shift the hitch around if you can't get the bolt to align. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just take my 19 millimeter socket, get these all tightened up. Again, we don't have to get too crazy on how tight because we're gonna go back with the torque wrench to make sure they're properly actual seated. So just go ahead, get these all snugged up. Now we're gonna go back with that same 19 millimeter socket and our torque wrench. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually sell these here at E-Trailer, or you can generally rent one at an auto parts store. And this is gonna be an important step because it's gonna make sure that you're not putting too much stress on the threads by over tightening, but also it's gonna be tight enough to where it's not gonna loosen up. So go ahead and check the instruction manual for those torque settings, set your torque wrench and go through and let's get these torqued down. Now we officially have our hitch installed and really the last step is to trim our plastic here to be able to fit back up. Now you don't have to put this back on, but for that nice clean look, it's not too hard to just trim this out. Now this vehicle actually had a factory hitch that we removed, so it's already kind of been trimmed. And what I can suggest is use the instruction manual to see their measurements and you can trim that using plastic sh with some shears here. You can also use a Dremel tool or whatever works best for you. It's pretty thin to cut through, so just make sure you wear eye protection while doing that. And really you can kind of just mock it up. You can align the holes and see how much you need to trim. Um, you can go a little bit larger if you need to, to gain access uh, for space. Ours, we are actually gonna be running a four pole wiring through here. So I'm actually gonna leave a little bit extra. That way I can pass those wires through. But we'll go ahead and we'll grab our hardware and trim up as necessary and get this installed. And that was a look and installation of the E-Trailer Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Toyota Sienna.